OG for T1. An opportunity to prove once again that they deserve that shot at the title in game five. Right. Once again, going to be banned on the side of T1. The Skarna in response to the Yone ban to not allow that first pick to come through for T1. We are setting up for the Ash first pick. The Callista going to be removed by BLG. That's their adaptation. And there's likely going to be the Ash lock in for T1. I mean, you imagine the Renata again rises in priority once more. And the Ash Renata is the direction that T1 will head towards. Ooh. Oh, okay. The Insta Nar lock in here. Blind here for BLG, of course, with the Jax ban. And into the Ziggs combo. Nice. All right. They have their AP damage secured from the bottom side. They have the safety of Ziggs uh, playing back. And maybe they go for lane swaps, try and get away from it. Then you can get extra turret play money with the Ziggs. Look to blow up towers as the game goes on. Looks like T1 is just going to go towards the tried and true. Renata carry has been so solid on it across the course of 2024. We'll lock it in once again. And now, perhaps look to the top lane to give Zayas something good into the NAR. But NAR just such a safe blind pick that really, I'm pretty sure Bin will be happy with any of those matchups. They may also look to lock in jungle now. Maybe they Good. want to grab the Vi for themselves. Even though it didn't work out last time, Ona is still an exceptional Vi player. Gives you that lockdown. Also, just it synergizes really nicely with the Ash. Instead, they're going to pick the Silas. Makes sense. Ziggs, Nah, both great ultimates to steal. BLG likely going to look towards their mid hit. Makes sense. Get the smolder in <laughs> the night. You hear their reactions from the crowds yeah, on that one the too. Most like champion it's a, con in the world, it's a controversial it? champion. Yes, does have to scale a lot and stack up dragon stacks. But we've all we've also seen uh, the lane phase against a lot of these melee matchups be pretty oppressive in itself. So let's take a look as the bands come through. Definitely target jungle. The value you mentioned take away from owner and then on T1's side. What supports are they worried about? They're probably, On's probably just going to go with one of those engagers, you know, REL-type uh, champions. They're still scared of the uh, Blitzcrank after last game. Some flashbacks there. I mean, it makes sense. Faker particularly didn't like yeah, the flash he did not have a punch. punch time. Faker getting caught a few times in that game. The Nocturne. I mean, the adaptation's coming through from PLG, denying what made T1 successful in, uh, in game two. I mean, really, not much of a, a... I mean, now that the Nocturne's gone, T1 could still go for the Orn once more, but the blind pick Nah kind of deters that again. And yeah. BLG's draft approach, I think, has been very smart. They know the tendencies that T1 like to go towards. The Xin Zhao are going to be taken away from Jun. So the jungle pool now very pinched, but the Sejuani still available. A reliable frontline engage. And that's going to be locked in. And a pretty good denial pick. Don't want uh, owner providing that synergy uh, to his solo laners with the Silas also already locked in on the side of T1 to complement it. Yeah, especially since you already have that melee, as you say. We'll see where T1 decides to go next. So we were talking about the Camille from Bin's perspective True. as a counter to Nar. Zeus also played it against Bin many times, but he's not going to play it today. Back to the rumble here, and we get the rumble plus the team fighting combination here, quite possibly with the Wukong. I mean, Zeus' rumble is definitely a terrifying pick. He's so comfortable on the champion and into the Nar. I think in the early laning phase, rumble can still be very oppressive. Later on, it gets a little bit safer for the Nar. Looks like it's going to be Poppy, though, for Ona instead. Signature pick for Ona, one that he's incredibly comfortable on. Yeah, and kind of preemptively into what you expect to be an on recon. Uh, yeah, I think that that's a really good answer, for sure. Good disengage as well. You can see BLG once again drafting a lot of team fights. It has sort of been the go-to approach from BLG in this series. They have easy ways of engage, they have good follow-up, and they've just got incredible scaling. Whenever you see Smolder and Ziggs, its ability to slow the game down and stall is so effective because of their wave clip. So this game, though, the previous games in this series have been a lot centered on who is going to find success in the grubs and get at least four to six grubs for their team and then be able to push down a bunch of towers and snowball their leads that way. 
in this setup in, in Champ Select, I, I would definitely prefer to be the T1 side, at least for grub fights. So maybe this game will put to the test, you know, is our BLG going to be able to uh, outscale that later with some smolder value? I definitely think T1 have gotten themselves uh, a lot of what fits into their style. Pick comps have been very successful so far at this World Championship. Their ability to catch someone off on a side lane and convert that into something greater was something we also saw with the Orn Nocturne composition that they drafted earlier in this series. And so Gumiyushi's arrows are going to be crucial, and Faker's stealing of things like the Sejuani ultimate and the Na ultimate are going to be important to setting up those plays for T1. I really want to see the T1 bottom lane. How much value do they get out of the Ash plus Kalista, such a strong combination for them. Renata. As said, <laughs> excuse me, Renata. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, backs against the wall now for T1. Our reigning world champions find themselves needing to win two games to get themselves a fifth title. And we talked a lot about the weight of expectation, the weight of the crown sitting on T1's head. But in this moment, that is realized even more than ever. Thank you actually going out without buying items. He's going to recall. He'll buy himself some items. Now has a Dorman's Ring and a Health Potion. But even the Infallible make mistakes here on the grandest stage of them all. The grandest stage in eSports. Faker fumbles at the start, obviously. Just a small mistake, just a small misstep. But that is all that can define a whole series like this. BLG just one win away from that World Championship for the LPL to return to being the best team in the world or having the best team in the world for the first time in three years to take that title away from the defending world champions. The T1, it all rests on this game. The BLG, they will have another opportunity if they end up losing. T1 poke their noses in, but it doesn't look like anyone is going to get too much out of this level one. The tiny bit of ward experience is currently still in the game on this world's patch. Not taken out quite yet as on live, and so that will remain for Faker there. As T1 go for their invade, get their ward down, and Bin will just be forced to watch on. And for the first time in this series, we'll see the split map. Bin is hovering around. I wonder if he's trying for a... Nah, okay, no steal for him. The ward in the brush as well. We'll spot out if Ben tries to do anything cheeky. But we haven't seen this split map swap so far. Both top laners throughout the series have been doing what you see Zeus doing now, trying to leech what experience they can. But Zeus is very much isolated from the rest of his team. I'm kind of surprised that we don't see him hovering around the mid lane, sharing experience with Faker, getting ready for the potential dive. Because the thing is, Jun is going to be trapped on the bottom side of the map, which means that Zeus is very susceptible to an incoming dive. And with Bin on the way, T1 have to be ready to stop this from panning out for BLG. Yep, they're going to bring all four here. Bin helping Shun accelerate his jungle clear while they build up the rest of that wave and head on over. Now, Carrier, level two, gone back to base, making a beeline towards the bottom lane. Has to get there as quickly as possible. Ona hovering around the top side, ready for a potential TP in from Bin, but he's sticking towards the bot side of the map for now, ready for the oncoming dive. I and mean, the risk for Carrier is him trying to get back into this lane. He may just be cut off by Shun and Bin. He'll be seen on that ward about now. Zeus gets the level two underneath the tower, flashes away from the grand entrance, but the damage continues to rain down from Bin. Shun tanking the tower. Zeus gets a bailout. Carrier keeps him alive for the moment. That bailout will run out, though, and BLG can look for a redive if they so decide to. Say it's taken down. Bin flashes away on tanking the tower, and BLG will escape with a kill and their lives. Nice, just the tip of the W there from Shun, able to get it. They're able to finish it off. Elk here cashes in once again. So many games we've had Elk getting first of blood. He'll be rich on the zigs again. I mean, in terms of XP, Bin hasn't really been able to catch much. He's not even going to TP to the top wave. He's just going to run towards it. Ultimately, though, BLG secure themselves the kill. But I'm not sure I would say that it was a huge advantage gained. As Zeus TPs back into the bot side, is able to catch a lot of the remaining wave. And the gold still remains even. The big thing affecting these lane swaps, though, is that Ziggs also takes teleport here. So not only did Elk get the first blood money there with the cash in, but then teleports right back down to the bottom lane. Zayas has no flash to really threaten him if it is a 1v1. Elk has a flash and, of course, the satchel to escape any precarious situations. Kerry is working his way up towards the top side. Bin without that summoner himself. Perhaps we'll see a dive materializing because owner's on his way towards that top lane too. Faker forced away, 150 HP on him. 
make it very difficult for him to stay around. Carrier looking for the handshake here. Bin jumps away, and the handshake is just short of a full agreement. And they're actually calling Shin over back to the bottom side once again. It's dive o'clock, the grand entrance goes down. Zeus is overheated, and he's sent packing. BLG find their second. An easy execute for BLG. Bin reads that the dive is likely coming top, and he's out of there before a play is even set up. Meanwhile, Zayas sticks around a little too long and loses his life once more. Still, though, you can see he's 300 gold up on Bin. He's still level four to the level two of Bin. And so while he is conceding gold, ultimately he still finds himself ahead of his top lane counterpart. Yep, dying for experience, sticking around down there on the bottom sides. Meanwhile, Finishing up with the rest of this uh, split map jungle camps here. Take away the rest of the Raptors before swapping over. And BLG feeling pretty good about this one because in the mid lane, Knight has just been pushing in constantly with this smolder, stacking up, scaling quite nicely, even working away at his own turret plate. I think he's going to get knocked up here. It's more about just getting stacks for Knight. As you say, he's on 24 right now. We'll just want to get towards that 225 oh, mark. Again. Deus, once again, a little bit overstepped here in the bottom side. And Bin jumps in, hops on, and Minion takes the Highway Express to get towards this rumble. Who goes over here? The Flames better going down. But Zayas is going to go back to the fountain again. No escape for him. He tries to clear the wave. But in the end, he will be put in the ground by Bin. BLG now 3-0 up, a 700 gold lead, only six minutes into this game. And I mean, the first few kills, I think, weren't the end of the world for Zayas, but now adding a third is really going to make things difficult for T1 in this early game. You can see Shun with a 300 gold lead over his jungle counterpart. That Ziggs is being accelerated so much and been able to close that gold gap that had previously been built up in favor of Zayas. Hans on the warpath here, passes through mid, and T1 are starting to, trying to stick to that game plan of taking down the grubs to be able to snowball turret plate money and turrets later on. But BLG with so many early kills already throwing a wrench into the plan. I mean, Jun has just been so active throughout this series, constantly looking for ganks, and he's a core part of why BLG is even here. The turnaround in the Swiss stage that he brought to the team and just his playmaking in the early game has been phenomenal. He is continuing that trend, and he finds himself involved in all three of BLG's early game kills. Elkin on with their synergy with this Rakan and Ziggs as well. You know, knockups into satchel charges. So far, nicely executed from their side. We will see as far as the mega stacking continues. The tier picked up there for Knight, continually stacking that up as well as Faker goes for another trade. Steals away the Smolder Ultimate, can use that obviously later to clear a wave or just to heal himself up. Let's give you a bit of health regeneration when it hits in the middle of it. Faker now passing down towards that bottom side. Owner's on his way down there as well. Gumayushi and Carrier able to take a plate in the top lane. Elk, only level five right now, does have the flash. Guma's six, so has that Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Orange gonna try and hold this wave so that Elk can get back to the relative safety of the tower. Exactly, it was a nice little kind of uh, Red Rover, Red Rover, send one member over there as Guma and Karia run past the tower to zone Elk out from the minions, but On tries to go collect, as you said. So On actually gets in and they're kind of funneling uh, extra experience there into him, but now Elk is finally able to make his way over. Only gets in range for the last two minions though, so did lose a bunch of XP there. You can see Elk still not level six, while Gumiyushi's almost towards level seven. T1 will use the pressure they have in the top side and the push that they had through bot to now take away the first dragon of the game. It's three Grubs and a Drake in their names at the eight minute mark. I think that will be critical for T1 moving forward since BLG have drafted really good late game for themselves. T1 are gonna use these objectives, try and draw them out to you. I mean, there are different ways to look at this, right? Because from PLG's perspective, the fact that they've been able to find these advantages in what is a very scaling comp night, gonna be forced to flash away, knows that the set of play from Ona was very risky. Um, so BLG having this advantage in the early game just better sets them up for scaling later. Faker face checking. Straight into Shun, the Glacial Prison hits, but Faker heals up with that Kingslayer. Owner's gonna force Shun away for now. On does have the quickness, but doesn't want to dash in to bolster the attack of Shun. In the end, Faker does manage to escape, doesn't burn the flash, and uh, holds on to that summoner. And I mean, what I'm talking about, 
things can look good from the perspective of BLG. T1 have been able to secure all these early objectives. Kobe was already highlighting the fact that the early investment in the grubs, their skirmishing potential of the composition, and the fact that Zeus is actually, even with all that pressure, is still a level up, and he has a huge stacked wave on the bottom side of the map. He's very comfortable in terms of gold, so I think that T1 definitely still have avenues, even though things aren't looking great for them in the early game. Yeah, in the one versus one down there. Had a huge wave for himself at the tower as well to collect, so even though the rest of BLG getting kills onto him in the one versus one feels pretty decent for himself. T1 do have those pick tools as well, so even if you do start to fall behind a little bit, you've got the ammo, you've got the follow-up with the equalizer, you have Faker jumping in with the abscond that duck just like this. Elk doesn't sidestep. Faker dashing forward for a little bit more damage, using that passive to its full effect. Steals away the Mega Inferno bomb, Elk has to flash it. Faker takes the tower, and Elk just dies! It's hunting season for Faker in the top lane! He just runs him down, even with the first chain missing. Conquer stacked up. Thank you for the ultimate and finishes the job himself. Now, Shun will just get there a little bit later. Not going to have any sort of you know, kill threat as far as damage goes. So uh, no harm, no foul, though. Again, the Ziggs with the teleport, he can get back to the minions at the very least. I mean, what a confidence booster for T1 as well to see Faker getting a solo kill on the sideline. Has to reignite the T1 members and the T1 fandom. As uh, Carrier now in danger. Caught out with the quickness alongside that Glacial Prison Carrier, though still has 150 HP to work with here. Hostile takeover only hits onto Shun. Guma starts to open up and put the arrows in the back of that ball. Shun able to walk away, though Guma really doesn't have too much damage yet. And we've come back to the game plan overall for T1 here with this composition. They want to stack these Void Grubs, get that bonus to be able to take down a lot of these towers, open up areas to then make their signature picks on the map by denying vision and using ash arrows. Faker, his ultimate is going to be available soon. Zayas has the TP and the ulti available. TP available for Bin as well. Owner has found Jun. On has flash here. We'll use it to get away. You knew the Setfast presence was coming from Ona. Stops any dashes in its area. And so On has to burn the flash. Use the blink instead of one of Rakan's many dashes. Knight, too far away from the play. Now making his way down, but Faker controlling the river. Trying to force on back. The arrow isn't quite going to connect, and that is looking to be six grubs for T1, so part one of the plan coming true, yeah, Kobe. Exactly. Even though BLG getting some extra early kills in the lane swap and in the side lane, T1 still. Let's see if they can actually get the sixth one here. It is actually kind of important to get the double Void Might spawn. Should be able to, no problem. Nobody around to smite steal, and uh, they will secure that very big objective. We have seen how quickly you can get tower gold. Shun hovering around the bot side of the map. There's a potential play onto Zayus on the rumble, but there's no way for him to really play through. Instead, the rest of Team 1 is going to look to reset. You can see the Elk benefiting from finding those early kills onto Zayus, but after losing his life on Gumiyushi, kind of playing the map well, he's been able to close that gold gap thanks to the CS advantage that he's been able to find. And we find ourselves in a neutral game state 12 and a half minutes into game four. Tiny gold lead for BLG. You can see Shun about 500 gold ahead, the bot side about 200 gold ahead each as well, but as close to neutral as you can get in this series. T1, though, do have the neutrals themselves, those six grubs and the Drake. Next Drake up in 40 seconds' time. You can see Carrier pathing through that bot side jungle, hope, hoping to get vision towards that dragon pit. They'll use the mid prior and then they'll move T1 down towards that bottom side to make sure they can control that bot side river. And BLG, they have so much wave control. Ziggs in a mid lane, have the Smolderverse Silas on top side. Oh, no. looks for Bin, he locks him up. Bin, though, with a great Narm into the wall. Oh, just gonna have to flash away the locket invested as well. Bin holds on to his summoner. BLG beginning to collapse the Mega Inferno Bomb coming out as well. There's the arrow. Bin sidesteps it. Zeus might have to flash the wall here. Ono on that front line. Locked up with the quickness. He dives onto Elk and Yushi caught up. Elk falling low though, and the flame spin is enough to burn him down in the river. And LT1 begin to turn on the afterburners. Shun has to flash across, uh, dash across the wall with the Arctic Assault. Gumi Yushi can't quite get the down, down with the body. Carrier though! He will not let you escape! And now On has to dance away with that grand entrance. Kerry are looking for a little bit more. Gumi Yushi puts a volley in his back and forces him to the safety of his tier two. Not only does Kerry a flash to get the kill there, not like should escape, but he also bailed out owner for T1. Big Renata play. 
a massive play for T1. Ona setting things up by getting that collapse onto Bin. The follow-up from the rest of T1 as well as BLG tried to collapse onto T1, thinking that they'd overstayed their welcome on the bottom lane, but they're able to turn the play around thanks to the arrival of Gumiyushi and Carrier. T1 looking strong here in game four. And BLG off there, resets off there. Deaths immediately trying to get out onto the map and take this Rift Herald away because they know if T1 get the Rift Herald alongside six grubs, that is a tower taking machine. Baker's here to check though, and the rest of T1 are making their advance through the mid lane. On and Shun in the pit, the Rift Herald down to 2000 HP, been looking for that Nava as well. The Rift Herald still sitting at 2000, that eye is open. T1 will close it and slam the door as well in BLG's face. Back out onto the map, T1 don't waste any moments. Securing the Rift Herald, forcing BLG back. They can look to drop that mid if they want. The Ziggs wave clear is gonna be so obnoxious, so they're not gonna to look to use it on this wave. We come back to a crucial point. BLG's composition have a lot of tools to stall. So securing that Rift Herald is gonna help T1 unlock these towers and keep the pressure up. Game plan moving ahead here. Faker deep into enemy territory, finding on. Blast cone will get on to safety. Faker just dashes back. But again, now is where we're going to see the real acceleration for the side of T1. With Rift Herald plus the full six scrubs, you can drive the Herald in for the extra Void Might spawns there, immediately move up, snowball all of this money. This is what we've seen in so many of the games in this series is such an acceleration at this point, the mid uh, point of the game for the team that did get the early lead. And T1 are that team this time around. DLG trying to defend. Glacial Prism hits onto On. The arrow also connects. Bin dashes in. The Nar back. The hostile takeover. Makes Shun go berserk under, under, underneath the tower. And he pops the locket, but he will go pop first. BLG starting to turn this one on T1's head. They found two. Carrier has no flash, but Knight has one to chase. Carrier escaping on 100 HP, but On will not give him that luxury. BLG find three in the top side. And just like that, BLG punish the aggression from T1. Trying not to lose any momentum, they set their sights on the top tier one, but BLG deny them access and turn the fight around. That play right there might change the course of this series. BLG with Knight on the front lines with his Trinity Force Smolder completed. Well, they're trying to answer mid here for T1. The bomb doesn't quite take out all of the minion wave because of the Void Mites. T1, T1 stick around, they just can't quite finish the tower though. But Bin with some crucial playmaking there, getting a beautiful Nar ultimate off onto two members of T1, and then just barely getting away with his life to deny Ona coming back to life thanks to the Renata passive as well. The mid tower still not gonna fall just because of the wave clip from Elk. Carrier tries his best. The Mites should be able to secure this. No! Knight gonna deny that once more. BLG fighting that tower's life. But here we are. Let's look back at the replay. All right, so it starts out. They use both Baker's ulti as well as the Ash Arrow. And as you say, Bin, just as he goes in, gets the knock back on two of them there, Carrier and Owner. And so they get the first kill. Knight then arrives on the Smolder, flashing forward to chase them down with his freshly completed Trinity Force. And BLG, I mean, we have seen Smolder scale into terrifying areas for a long time in the, the last few patches, actually. So we'll see if we can put this to the test here. Carrier knows that one is going to be rough. It's a tense situation. The gold finds itself even, even once more. We'll check out the itemization once we get back. But uh, two dragons in the favor of T1. Six scrubs to the name. Third dragon of the game going to be spawning soon. And ultimately, it becomes a question of how strong will this Smolder get? Can T1 <laughs> accelerate the game quickly enough before Knight becomes a serious problem? Or can BLG stall the game long enough to get to a point where T1 will run out of options? Might already be a serious problem as uh, we'll see him continue to scale. I mean, when you accelerate at the beginning, then you get to even stack oh, yeah. much quicker. And so we'll start to see the execute and the burn really come in. Only 60 stacks short of that 225 mark. Alongside that, BLG helped by the fact it's a chem soul this game. Obviously, you don't want to give the enemy team a soul, but when they've stacked two drakes, giving them a chem soul to let yourself scale isn't as impactful as if it were in Inferno, if it were a uh, Hextech. So T1 will be licking their wounds a little bit. That twist of fate. 
Takuma Yushi caught with the Mega Inferno Bomb. The wave cleared out in mid as well by Elk. T1 will use the time they have to pressure in towards this blue side jungle. Drake up in 10 seconds. It doesn't look like BLG really want to fight it. Not necessary for them to do so. Uh, of course, just number three here for T1. I think the correct call is we keep on scaling. We got to get our smolder to the break point that you just talked about. And so they're going to push hard on the other side of the map. Definitely the correct choice here with the scaling that they have available to them. Take away a, a little bit of the jungle as well while they're at it. But T1, they press ahead. It's a tense affair. I mean, Medic, you called it earlier. The losing team in every game, three kills yep. was the maximum. Well, T1's at three. Mm -hmm. One more, and we've got a tense <laughs> game on our hands. <laughs> Well, I also do have to say, I'd be willing to bet a lot that this will not be a 27-minute game ending, especially with BLG having Smolder plus a Ziggs. The reason why this is such a good pairing oh. as oh, the arrow goes wide, but Faker's still here. Take a look at that flank. We'll seal away the quickness from on guest. Oh. Char flashes in, finds two. Equalizer on the back line as well. Oh. As Faker is not off this earth, he finds the engage. He finds everything T1 were looking for. Exceptional play from T1. You think that the play falls short because the arrow doesn't connect, but Faker will find a way. And then with the six scrubs, with the rift kill, they immediately take the tower afterwards. And guess what? They're turning straight towards the barrel. Zayas on. Oh, it's just taking away to the flame spitter damage. Zayas tries to turn it around, and in the end, BLG unable to hold on to their tier two. Bin's coming across from the side as well. He TP'd in. T1 have started the Baron, and you have to feel it all hinges on this. On a knife's edge between T1 and BLG, will BLG look to try and take the fight? Chun has flash and smite. Elk now joins the battle, teleports in. Bin looks for Carrier, lands the slow with the boomerang. Knight TP'd in as well. BLG are going all guns blazing into the battle here as T1 are hailing the retreat on dashing forward. He's only at 300 HP. Faker eats the bomb and he's oh. taken out low. Mega Inferno bomb going in. Zayas will sacrifice himself for the good of his team to make sure the rest of T1 are able to escape with this Baron. The quick play from T1, the teleport ends up not mattering here for BLG as they only got the one kill in the aftermath. T1 just got so much out of this. Faker on the flank, even with the arrow going wide, he makes the play and T1 finds so much. I mean, the arrow comes through, it does not connect, but on the right-hand side is Faker. He interrupts the knockup and then he connects the two-man charm into then the knockup come through from Ona. The wombo combo is exceptional, and T1 finds some much needed kills onto the crew. Two crucial carries of BLG. Yeah, Faker laid the way for the Renata ultimate there, catching them up. And then Zeus, who had been 2v1ing earlier, uh, goes for the sacrifice here to allow all the other Baron buffs on T1 to remain alive. Yeah, I was. We've seen so much Bin run by. I thought it was Bin making the flash, and but it was Zayas, and he did have to sacrifice his life up towards the top side of the map. T1, though, immediately back out on the map, and look, they're doing what they did in game two, spreading themselves across the map, pushing in top, pushing in mids. And Kobe, you said quite confidently that this game isn't going to end in 27 minutes, but <laughs> the arrow yeah, once again onto Elki had the flash. He decides to use it afterwards. Ona couldn't quite get him rage to look engage top, any top. further. Faker's taken out the tier two in the top lane. Shun goes in with the Glacial Prism on there with the follow-up carrier, though. An incredible hostile takeover puts on in his place. Owner tanking the tower, Glacial Prism sold away by Faker as he dives onto the back line. Who else but Faker again in the end? He falls, but Guma is making Shun look like a pin cushion. Night Force to flash away. Elk trying to put the damage down as well. He won't land it on carrier. The fancy feeder out in force. T1 begin to push up bot side. Yeah, T1 are taking another tower with the six uh, Void Grubs as well as the Rift Hill. They keep on forcing these Vedias even when BLG try and construct their counter. T1 rebuff it. The Renata is just too much defense. Charging into that ultimate seems like suicide. I mean, I just feel like we're feeling the Faker effect here. He's not at the start of this play. The arrow connected, forcing the summoners out. Then when the range gauge comes through, the TP is quick to follow. Carry it with a fantastic ultimate to force BLG to disengage. And then when Faker arrives, he does not hesitate to die past 
the tower and set up the play for him and Gumiyushi to tear BLG apart. At the end, some slim margins there as well. Knight being forced to flash away. A critical summoner spell, but T1 are doing a good job, I think, pushing the pace of this game because, as you mentioned, one of the reasons I was confident in saying that I didn't think it would end in 27 minutes, Ziggs and Smolder is such a good combo. Yes, and Z are. Ziggs wave clear plus the Smolder uh, wave clear and scaling itself in that champion. But because T1 got those six Void Grubs that we have been so probably too hyper focused on, um, the pushing power uh, that they have shown and really accelerating this game and being able to get their Dragon Soul as well in a very timely manner means we are still on course for that T1 game plan. And credit to Zeus. 0-3 during the laning phase has bounced back phenomenally. Been landing some very important Rumble ultimates and he's going to be important in the upcoming sieges. That tool is great for zoning away the Rumble, sorry, for zoning away the Smolder and the Ziggs from providing that wave clear and protecting their towers. That's so vital they managed to put that damage down on tonight to keep him away from the battle because he has hit that 225 mark. Now sitting at 230 stacks. That Doomsday Clock has ticked over to midnight for T1. They are still in the lead. Kemsol, 4,000 gold ahead. Six grubs barren up in a minute 30 as well. Faker has been on fine form, finding people with the quickness, with those engages. But BLG can still hold on to the fact they have this wave clear. They also are on championship points. So even if they lose this game, they have another to battle back against T1. Ona forced away with the satchel, but doesn't really take too much damage. The Mega Inferno Bomb only clipping onto Carrier as well. I'd say the next like four-ish minutes of this game will be so critical because, you know, Smolder working towards the rapid fire, that's when you really start to get scared when you have the poke of the rapid fire Smolder plus the Ziggs. T1, they've got a nice little window here though with a very, very sizable advantage with Dragon Soul plus Baron coming up, which they can try and use to, to bait BLG out and look for their engages. So many snap engage angles. Faker with a stolen Rakan ultimate at the moment. Looking for Shun. Glacial present. Faker dodges. He knew something was up. His spider sense was tingling. Good check there. Good reactions from him. Pops the Scryers as well, and T1 can come in to take away all that safety. Oh no! Vanishes get the knock into the wall. Sebas Presence has already been used, though. On will have a second dance away. Hostile takeover coming out. Shun cleansed away by that. Mikhail's out of on. In the end, it's just an investment of ultimates from T1. Mikhail's used. Carry yeah. flash handshake. Pulls back Elk. Uh, Faker trying to get with a quickness onto the back line. Gumiyushi unable to open up quite yet. Bin doing the damage onto Ona as well, but already Elk is down to 300 HP. On the top side, Shun is down. The equalizer out from Zeus will save Ona's life and force BLG away. It becomes a question of can the Baron be secured? And with Shun down, I believe that the answer is yes. There is no smite available. Elk, crucially, still has his ultimate up. But with that, Faker secures his 500th kill at the World Championship. BLG are looking to fight this. They TP'd Elk into the mid lane. Has that Mega Inferno bomb. It's going to hit onto Ona. Faker able to dodge to the side of it. 3,000 HP now on the Baron as BLG advance. T1 have already got the Baron though, and BLG now have to begin to retreat. But the damage coming out from Elk is absolutely massive. Faker dives in, lands on Bin. Grand entrance already locks him up. He wants to stop watch to try and buy himself a second. Has the bailout taken on him as well, and he flashes. Faker survives somehow. T1 get out with the Baron buff. And BLG are unable to find purchase on the game. Baker plays a dangerous game there. <laughs> so close to the execution, but he's able to immune it. Flashes out and escapes with his life. My Ooh. goodness, Baker has turned it up to 11 in this game for. He knows the stakes that are in this game, and he does not want to give up the title that easily. It's likely that we're going to game five. Two on still have to close this one out. The arrow connects, not quite. Shun flashes away to safety. BLG really got to just keep focusing on their defense here. They do have flashes on both Knight and Elk. So as long as they don't let anyone get caught and give up some some critical summoner spells here early on, if they focus on their wave clear and defense at towers, then T1 really are going to have to make use of this two minutes of Baron buff to crack inside and get to those inhibs. T1 need to get someone in the mid lane. They're going to send Faker over. Rumble is actually going to stay top to catch that wave. Has the TP available. T1 being spread quite thin. Normally, they prefer to play that 4-1 setup. 
But uh, Bin doing a good job of pushing that top wave in deep. Now he can regroup, buy a little bit more time for BLG. Again, the wave clear, looking to be strong here from the side of BLG. Knight's chipping away, not doing a huge amount of damage to Ona, but for now, all they need to do is stall. They're doing exactly that. 90 seconds before the Elder Dragon comes to bear. BLG yet to pick up a Drake in this game, but if they get the Elder, their fortunes may change. They are just trying to defend right now. T1 have been unable to break the base, break that inhibitor line with this Red Bull Baron power play. A minute left on it, but it looks like T1 are going to just look for the resets here, get back out onto the map, get that vision control down once again, and then try and pull BLG into a fight at Elder, because they've got to. You can't just give the Elder away to oh, T1. Yeah. You have to make your final stand there if you are BLG. And if you win that fight, you might just win Worlds. You might just win the championship. That is how much of a game decider Elder, Baron can, Elder Dragon can be. I mean, Kobe already talked about the animization. BLG is strong enough to fight. Their carries are in a position. It ultimately comes down to execution and finding access to this Dragon Pit. Right now, T1 are denying all vision on doing what he can to find angles of attack, maybe even a TP flank, but he's been caught. On locked up against the wall, pulled back with a handshake, the Keeper's verdict finds him guilty, as On is slain by Guma Yushi, and now will BLG even try to mount a defense around the Elder Drake? They TP to the bot lane, Bin looking at that flank position, his Mega is going to expire pretty soon, and Baker's looking for a flank of his own as he TPs in towards this blue side, Bin now on the wrong side of the rift, this Baker's hunting, and he's looking for a minute, ah, the flash forward, Zenar's presence knight, able to flash away as well, the hostile takeover but comes up short, the Nar stolen away by Baker, locks Bin against the wall, and puts him six feet under, Shun next on the menu, as Gumi Yushi begins to open up, Shun taken out by Zayas, the Equalizer does exactly that for T1, it's going to equalize this series at two and two. The reigning world champions will not go down that easily. They will push us to a deciding game five. They are going for it. There's, there's only on left to defend the Nexus. Faker steals away the Rakan ultimate. The defense is not strong enough. And T1 will bring us to game five. On the shoulders of Faker. T1 will go to game five. There is no one like him, not on this earth. T1, take us to Silver Scrapes. The arena erupts with excitement. What looked like a terrible start for T1 turned miraculously after some incredible plays from that man in the mid lane. Game five is what we wanted. Game five is what we will get. Owner Poppy getting a lot of picks in this game as well. Carry a Renata, obviously very big pick, and Baker Silas as we go to the champion select for the deciding game.